It's also special because we have two very special guests known to you. We have Jim Caviezel. Jim is film and television actor. He, of course, played Jesus in Passion of the Christ, and he currently plays John Reese on the CBS series Person of Interest. And seated next to him is Raul Esparza, television stage, film actor, and singer. You may know him from the NBC series Hannibal, and he currently also stars in the NBC series Law and Order Special Victims Unit. Welcome to both of you. I'm so happy to have you, especially on such a special day. Is there anything about Christmas that is unique to you or that when you think of Christmas, it bespeaks how you have celebrated it in your life or your family? First of all, Christmas began in my home after Halloween. My mom had the Christmas decorations up. She, she, was, uh, she did that before all the shopping centers did mm -hmm. uh, back in the 70s there. And um, it, I, sh I think she was to say it takes so long for her to put it up. I want it up for a long time. So, but the, uh, she would have the, uh, on Christmas Eve, we'd have a certain a chili that we had. Um, we, uh, you know, every morning I remember getting up in the, in the presence and, and uh, getting my parents up probably about four in the morning. Um, a typical uh, family, but the, we, we went to Mass. And I think that was probably the foundation of the Passion of the Christ and part of the uh, looking for redemption in uh, the roles that I choose. doesn't mean my character has any redeemable qualities, but the story has something. I really believe that the, just the, the pride I feel in the family when I see the nativity, um, that, that that is my personal adoptive family. That, 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 and I have a great pride when I look at the baby in the manger and uh, that not just that he loves me, but I love him. Mm. Thank you, Jen. That's really, that's beautiful. Roel, what about for you? Most of my Christmas memories, I think, circle around Christmas Eve dinner because my family's from Cuba, and we would celebrate Noche Buena. They always roast a great big, you know, pig, and, which is epic. And uh, usually the men are in charge of the pig, and the women take care of everything else. And I remember sort of Cubans going into diabetic shock and people <laughs> kind of, you know, stumbling around because the pig's still not ready, but they're out in the yard cooking it. There's a lot of memories of, uh, of laughter and music and dancing and, and celebrating that night, which I thought everybody did. Um, Christmas Eve was the big celebration. And for me, the most beautiful memories have to do with having the dinner and then going to the midnight mass afterwards. There's something about the midnight mass that has always felt absolutely sacred to me. There's such a quiet sense of grace. The fact that we're all coming together at that hour to sort of usher in the, the day and the people who are there really want to be there. So my memories are of that grace and, and, then, and the party at home <laughs> and, uh, and the total joy of that uh, coming together. Jim, you mentioned your role as Jesus in Passion of the Christ, and you're so well known for that role. I'm wondering, how does one, first of all, get ready for something like that, but how does it change you? What do you bring to a role like that, your own spirituality, and how does it then change you? I don't know about you, but people talk about, you know, getting up in front of, on the stage and, and performing. Um, I'm scared. And the only thing I know that calms me down is my Lord. When I'm doing a film like that, I'm not so good at memorizing lines. I, I don't really memorize. I kind of, it, something happens in my heart and it, it takes over. Um, I guess in, in the basketball world or football, it's going into the zone. And that one was terrifying because Mel Gibson asked me to do it in Aramaic and Hebrew and Latin. And I thought, well, boy, he doesn't know my secret. I have no idea how I'm going to do this and get it down. Um, I called one of my friends and I said, I, I, I feel very intimidated playing this role. And he says, as you should. But, you know, Jim, God doesn't always choose the best. <laughs> but he chose you. What are you going to do? And I said, oh, that's good. So I think a big part with me is at first I tried to play Jesus. And it was good. But really, the when it was great is when he played me. 
Hmm. So I, I just, I used the sacraments of the Mass. I went to communion every day. I had the uh, confession every day. I went to, I took the rosary every day. So I always was in meditation. I didn't talk too much. And we'd have maybe, in every take that we did, maybe in five takes, one would be just a little different. And it was those little different ones mm. that really was the sum of, of the movie. And even when I watched it, I said, wow, he really did play me. So Raul, I want to ask you, you played Jonas Nightingale in the musical Leap of Faith. I think you also played Judas for... I played Judas in Godspell. In Godspell. Yeah. So you've had some religiously oriented characters. What do you bring to it? How does it change you? The interesting thing to me about Leap of Faith as, as a show was that Jonas Nightingale is a con man and a, a faith healer who uses um, the concept of belief to fool people and take their money and, and hurt them. And uh, in the end of the story, when, he, um, when something works through him, when he actually heals a boy, um, he can't handle it. He, he, I mean, there's a moment of prayer that was an extraordinary thing to perform. And his response was, it can't be possible. It simply can't be possible that you exist, or that I have been chosen to be a vessel for anything because I know that I'm a worthless man, which felt like such a fundamental truth to me. I often feel um, that you have to get out of the way of the play you're doing, and particularly in things like this, you want to just get out of the way and, and let God use you. So everything is tied up in such a fundamental way with my faith that, um, that there's, there's almost no, no need to, to invent anything. Every time you approach a part, I just simply um, trust that where it started is where it will live now. And I know that when it's not going well, it's generally because I'm getting in the way. I have actually done, I've auditioned for things that, that ended up being jobs that I got, you know, seven auditions later. I have memories of walking into to a church on 71st Street in Manhattan and kneeling in front of the shrine of the Virgin Mary and sort of praying and saying, I can't do this. This is not up to me. And... I know to a lot of people that sounds like mumbo jumbo, but it's something I believe in very, very, very deeply that um, it's simply not up to us. And finally, gentlemen, a prayer for this Christmas. A lot of our viewers, homebound, they're in hospitals, nursing homes, a lot of people who view the Mass, it's the only access they have to the Mass. And maybe there's a prayer in your heart for this Christmas, personal, for your own family or for them. What prayer this Christmas resides in your heart? You've heard it before, but it, it goes, uh, I heard the bells on Christmas Day, their old familiar carols play. And wide and sweet, the words repeat of peace on earth, goodwill to men. I thought it's now this day had come. The belfries of all Christendom had rung so long, the unbroken song of peace on earth, goodwill to, to men. And in despair, I bowed my head. There is no peace on earth, I said. For hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Thank you. Rule a prayer for Christmas. In the midst of all this upheaval and so much doubt, it's simply a, 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 a prayer for clarity, a prayer for a, a pause, which I guess is in a way what, what Christmas means to me. In spite of everything, it always seems to me to be the dawning of hope and no matter how absolutely frightening things get, and boy, are they frightening these days, and you feel so hopeless, there is still this, this beacon. This beacon that is, I think very much what, what Jim just said, is trust that um, who you are is who you are meant to be, and all you were ever meant to be, truly yourself, and to hold, hold to, that, to that suspension and to that, to that pause and to that sense of, of, uh, of hope for all of us because um, we, we really can't fix it ourselves. And uh, it's, uh, it's about, about that clarity and trust. I think if we could all just take a deep breath together, it would be something. Gentlemen, thank you. Thank you both for your profound sharing on this Christmas Day with us. I know I appreciate it, and I'm quite sure our viewers really appreciate your